Binko spoke several times about the Polish military and their seemingly endless shopping spree. And they've done it again. Poland recently requested purchase of over 800 of the newest US Jasm cruise missiles. The US State Department approved it. So this video will explain what sort of a missile Poland is buying, when might Poland get those missiles and why are those missiles a big deal. Plus we'll explain how the said purchase gets Poland to the point where it's gonna have the second biggest cruise missile arsenal in NATO, trailing only the US one. So stay tuned. Cruise missiles are complex machines, but not all devices need to be so complex. Some can even be a breath of fresh air. Today's sponsor, Fume, has just such an innovative device. An award-winning flavored air device that can help you remove the bad part of your habit that you may be trying to shake off. Fume doesn't use electronics, it's completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And there are no harmful chemicals, just all natural, delightful flavors. Fume makes replacing your bad habit easy. It fills the void in a natural, guilt-free way. I love the feel of real wood, sweet craftsmanship. And it has this adjustable airflow dial. I also got the weighted base. I just can't stop spinning this thing. My henchman got me six flavors. Hard to decide, but crisp mint and orange vanilla are my faves. It's like pure fresh fruit taste. While stopping a bad habit is hard, switching to Fume is easy. Fume has over 150,000 customers and if you want to give it a try, you can use my code BINKOV when going to tryfum.com slash BINKOV. You'll get 10% off the journey back. Just click the link below or simply scan the code on the screen. Help yourself stop that bad habit. On March 12th, the US Defense Security Cooperation Agency published a press release. The State Department approved the sale to Poland. 821 joint air-to-surface standoff missiles with extended range, the JASSMER, specifically the B-2 variant of the missile. That's the newest variant there is, with even the US not having any in its arsenal yet. The first such missiles are scheduled for delivery to the US Air Force this October. Now, what is the B-2 variant? There's actually a small controversy surrounding it. The baseline JASM variant is now two decades old. It came around the same time as the British Storm Shadow, but JASM has been more steadily upgraded over the years. B variant added range, increasing it from 230 to over 580 miles. Now, ever since mid last decade, there was talk of an even newer variant, the XR variant, standing for extreme range, was often mentioned. Its range was claimed to be anywhere from 1000 to 1200 miles. Then claims started coming in that the D variant name replaced the XR designation. During the last few years, claims arose that D was replaced by B2 designation. But it's far from assured, even plausible, that the B2 variant is actually something that's drastically changed from the B variant, and that it includes any range increase. There are indications that the XR was a manufacturer's proposal to make a larger missile with a different body, for which the Pentagon did not go for, at least not at the time. Maybe that's how the confusion started. The 2022 DoD Selected Acquisition Report on JASA missiles says so. B variant offers extended range at some 500 nautical miles, that's around 580 miles. B2 variant, which Poland is to buy, has no range increase mentioned but does have further modifications, to address obsolescence issues and to improve processing power. Details are of course confidential, but if greater range was included, it would likely also include a different name. The document further lists B3 to come later on. A different DoD document said the first B3 contract is expected in 2024, with first delivery in 2027. D variant is expected the same year. The SAR document stated B3 is to add a GPS receiver less sensitive to jamming. The variant was described as getting various data links to support in-flight retargeting. On the other hand, Air Force 2023 procurement document does mention B2 variant comes after a wing restructure, which may or may not yield a range increase. But we digress a little. While the B2 variant of JASM for Poland is the absolute best JASM the US has right now, it's quite plausible it's not a thousand mile range weapon. Though updated in some other regards from the baseline B variant, 
new processor, sure, but addressing obsolescence could potentially involve other stuff, even some changes to radar absorbing materials, or somewhat updated infrared sensor for better targeting. That's of course total conjecture on Binkov's part. Even so, Poland is getting a very potent missile. JASM is stealthy, plausibly more stealthy now in its third iteration than the British Storm Shadow. It has a much longer range than the Storm Shadow. It might have a better imaging sensor. Other than that, it's fairly similar in size and warhead. So why is the JASM deal to Poland a big deal? Because once the deal goes through, Poland may become a cruise missile powerhouse of NATO. These aren't the first cruise missiles for Poland. Technically, many types of missiles can be described as cruise missiles. Certainly the ground-launched naval strike missile that Poland has, even though it's primarily an anti-ship missile, can be used to attack fixed land targets, as it uses satellite navigation. But even leaving those aside, Poland has earlier bought 70 JASM ER missiles, the 158B model, to be fired from their F-16s. Those were all delivered a few years ago. This new purchase will raise Polish totals to almost 900 air-launched cruise missiles. Sure, the US has more, but no other NATO country may have more. Right now, the closest competitor is the UK. It probably has around 80 or so Tomahawks left, the Block 4 variants that were bought to compensate for Block 3 variant usage over the years. The UK has also procured roughly 900 Storm Shadows back in the day. It fired only several in wars, though more may have been fired in tests. And it's been giving Ukraine some from its stocks. Total numbers given so far are not known, but the similar French Scalp EG missile was allegedly sent in two batches, totaling some 90 missiles so far. Given that Storm Shadow delivery started earlier, it's probable that at least a similar number was sent to Ukraine. Bottom line is, it's likely that the UK doesn't have more than 850 cruise missiles today. And while it does have a plan to replace Storm Shadows with a new missile, and maybe procure more, that will take time. Due to JASM production volumes, it's likely Poland will get all of their missiles fairly soon. As for other NATO countries, let's mention France. It had 500 Scalp EG missiles until 2015, when their inventory shrunk. It's possible those stored missiles were given to Ukraine, but whatever the true number is, and adding the 200 naval cruise missiles, France is unlikely to have over 600 cruise missiles in total at this point. So Poland, with its 891 cruise missiles, is indeed likely to be the second biggest cruise missile user in NATO after the US. And even when we look at worldwide arsenals, it's probably very high up on the list. While Russia has increased its production and it would have more missiles if it stopped launching them, its plausible everyday use prevents Russia from accumulating more than several hundred. China very likely has more though, likely over a thousand, though final count may easily be twice as many. Iran is a wild card with an unknown cruise missile arsenal, but it very well may have accumulated over a thousand such missiles so far. India may have close to a thousand. But other than these mentioned countries, it's unlikely any other country has stockpiled more. Not Turkey, Germany, South Korea, Israel, and so on. Of course, in the real world, the mission set of a cruise missile is to strike an important target far behind enemy lines. Using stealth and long range to go around air defenses and strike from a less than expected direction. And while a single cruise missile can't do much, almost 900 could do quite a bit. Such a number could likely paralyze Russian forces in Kaliningrad region, including lowering effectiveness of army brigades Russia has there, keeping most of Russian air forces there grounded, and probably sinking most of Baltic Fleet Navy ships that are moored there. While Kaliningrad is close to Poland and there are other systems to threaten it, JASMs would be the only systems that could threaten targets around St. Petersburg and even Moscow. Air launches over Latvia, for example, could reach Moscow. Of course, air launches are also a problem. JASM is air launched only. Right now, 48 Polish F-16 can use it. In the near future, F-35s will use them as well. On one hand, air launch means range can be extended by whatever distance the plane crosses before launch point. Against Russia, that may not be much, 
While some initial launches may be possible over the Baltic nations, over the longer term that may cease to be an option. Also, the launch platform needs to be in the air. In a war against Russia, it's likely at least some of the Polish Air Force bases are to be hit. Runways might be shut down for weeks. Poland would have to resort to dispersal and plane usage from improvised airstrips, which would lead to less efficiency, fewer sortie rates and ultimately fewer missiles used per day. And it's not like Poland would be able to fire off hundreds of missiles per day anyway. When all the F-35s arrive, 80 planes capable of firing JASMs would have other missions too. Air defense for one. A plane on a cruise missile strike mission would carry two missiles per sortie and perform maybe one or two missions per day. So it's unlikely Poland would fire more than a hundred JASMs per day, possibly even fewer. Target sets would not be an issue, as those would likely be provided by NATO command, using mostly US intelligence gathering assets. For now, the missile contract, while cleared, hasn't been signed. The US says the missiles alongside ancillary equipment and logistics services are worth $1.77 billion. That works out to $2.15 million per missile, but keep in mind Poland is getting support in the price, which the US purchases account for separately. The US Air Force is buying some 550 missiles per year, but Lockheed Martin is working on expanding its production lines. In 2023, it opened a second production line, using a more automated production process. The goal is to be able to make a thousand JASM and El Razum missiles per year in the near future. At least a few hundred would likely go to exports. While Poland isn't the only customer, it's by far the biggest. It's likely all Polish missiles could be delivered by 2030 or so. Whatever the future brings, Poland seems to be preparing for it. For better or worse, keeping in mind its national budget. Hey guys, before we go, a little bit of earnings stats. Ever wondered where our channel gets its earnings from? Well, here are some pie charts for a better understanding of the matter. In the first quarter of 2024, over half of our earnings came from sponsorships. Over a third came from AdSense ads, meaning YouTube's ads. 3% came from our patrons and channel members. And close to 2% came from merch sales, meaning our plushies and t-shirts and stuff. But mainly plushies, really. Those percentages can change over time. For example, a year ago, the first quarter of 2023 saw somewhat different ratios. And the first quarter of 2022 was different still. Back then we didn't have plushies on offer, so that's why merch sales are so small. Anyway, as any channel, we'd love to diversify and not be so reliant on one source of income. If you liked our video and if you love our content in general, feel free to hop over to our YouTube membership page or our Patreon page. The links are available in our video description. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.